day three on the solar. Loud as that. I'll show you that. It's important. You kill your fucking self. You know, if you're going to put yourself in a wheelchair, yeah, a ladder's going to be what does it for you. So I avoid putting myself in a wheelchair as much as I can generally in life. So you see on my ladder lock, it's set to the correct angle. You know it's set to the correct angle. It's a little bit steeper than me actually because in here lock on mine, there's a little ball and that ball is in that window. I think when it's in that window, it operates, but it could be doing a bit more up against the wall. But I put tension on my rope because I've tied my ladder off because I know it's funny for me. I've got like the... Uh, Gucci width extender, that's my dog, Gucci extender with the rubber feet, and I've tied it off lock, so it can't kick out. So I'll be all right working up there, it's not super high, uh, but obviously if I fell, I'd really mangle myself on this wall. I mean, I could fall, you know what I mean? But uh, I'm taking all the precautions, really, to make sure that I don't. One tool at a time, come back down, do another tool, not dragging about 8,000 things up there, that kind of shit. So that little setup got me along at that height, along there so that's done that's done these ones i couldn't access the top meter so i'm gonna take the steps set it up higher so i can hopefully go above that uni strut i've got to get some panels on there as well and i don't think my ladders are going to be big enough i've got them death defy things i think i'm gonna need a proper set of triple extensors because when i put the top two panels up i'll effectively need to get over the panel while they're 20 40 50, 60, 70 mil out, so I'm, I'm going to try that, but I'm going to go up there now and just do my last fixings. What you'll see I've done is I've put two in the end of each one to stop the, the fall down effect. The rest of them are holding the weight and the bottom rail's on the weight, so hopefully I've got enough fixings there. Hopefully the Gable end will take it, so yeah, we get there. I'll set that up now, finish them fixings before my lad goes to bed, and then I've sort of got to move this up, put the rails there and do more rails. So my top rung is already one, two, three from the top. My bottom rung can go up. I think I'll get the I'll get all the fixings done, but I don't think I'll get the panels on with these. That's why I was saying I'm only going to get the five up this weekend. Because I know, or I'm pretty sure that these won't get the top panels up. Obviously I can stand on here, flop a panel in and strap it quite safely. Use these to fix it. Up there, it's all ladder work, so... I might get someone round here. My mate's got a JCB. Might get to lift me up in the bucket. Or I might get two sets of depths. I'll think of something safe to do later. But I sort of knew these triple extenders, although they're pretty good. Good old Zargers. It was never going to get me up there to put panels up properly. Set off the next one. As you can see, I was right. My lads aren't big enough. Just stopped to wash everything down. Got that done. Obviously, my maths was wrong with the centre rail. So I'm going to drop that down in a minute. But uh, me and your task now, I need to level that bottom bar off. Because that's what my panel's going to sit on. It dips there, look. And then, there's my conduit. There's all the solar gear, look. I need to get that conduit into there. I'm going to do the wiring. I fancy a bit of a break from fucking ladder shit. And I've got to put the rails up there. But I think I've run out of uni strut. Keep calling it rail when I'm going to try use uni strut. I've got one full length. But I'm going to put a panel in here. And then work out where the top of my panel comes so I can roughly put my rails in up there because I don't want to make this middle mistake again. Dick move. If you want to do solar, and I don't, I just want to do my own ass, I suggest you get good at mass. <coughs> Shut up, dog. Get good at mass and measuring because there's loads of it. Even when I've done the design and the CAD and everything, I'm still out here arving stuff and jiggling stuff around and working out the panels and my dog fucking barking. I'm going to go and shoot that cunt. Yeah, so it's, uh, I'm not, I, I'm enjoying this. Don't get me wrong, but I won't be doing it again on my own ass. Or anyone else that my I just put batteries in because they're just like showers. The maths out is because I couldn't get up to measure that apex. I did it off trigonometry from down here. That's why my railing's a bit out. I knew it'd fit because my CAD was right and I put a bit of three metre conduit up to see I'd fit it all in. But yeah, it's gone out a bit. We were, we were. I'll never be able to live with that not being centre. So that's going to be fixed. For size, there we go, look. There's my rail it's going to strap to. It sat perfectly on that lip. It's up on that side. Well, I thought it'd look a bit small when it went up there, but it turns out it doesn't. So yeah, I've just put that one on so I can work out where the top is. I'll take it back off in a bit and I'm going to adjust that rail. I'll measure that so I ain't got to fuck around. Nice. Uh, yeah, woohoo. I enjoyed lifting that in the, in the slight breeze. I feel sorry for the guys that do it all the time in the gales. There's a little breeze lock and it was wee wah wee wah. When you struck L brackets, right, I'll have an mate out, yeah. But he doesn't smoke fags, go for cups of tea, sit down on his ass on his phone. So I've stuck one there, lot. There's a laser on it. And I'll stick one down there and I can loosen this rail and drop it into position. I will take this panel off though, because I'll end up fucking it. But yeah, I won't far off, but I'll put another one there, 
drop it in and we're away. For all my measurement, the only problem I've had is sometimes when I've tried to put one of these in, it's fouled on this, that's happened twice. And this particular one is off a little bit to the left because the way the wall's wobbly, it's just twisted at the bottom so I have to go with it. And one hole right there is going to drill. Not bad, not bad. I think this is the female one because although it looks like a knob, the inside's a hole. And then I think that this is a male one because it's got the male bit inside. I don't know which one's positive or negative though. We'll have to find that out in a minute, but I seem to recall the trick was that the positive plug goes in a female carrier. Is that right? Am I talking shit? Does it really matter? Help me. My uh, co-workers on this project, DMH Electrical and Mark Allison, have just sent me some voice messages, some videos and some messages and all sorts of information. About six minutes worth in total, but it's worth its fucking weight in gold to me because I didn't have a fucking clue. Or, well, I do know what I'm doing, but I sort of like... What I'm a big fan of is doing what the people have worked out. Like, why should I fucking reinvent the wheel? Which is what I'm going to end up doing if I don't just ask people. Don't be afraid to ask kids. So, yeah, I'll try and relay the information to you now so that you know what I know. Even if you're not going to do something, it might be useful if you ever got to do some testing or something. But don't kill yourself, kids. The thin plug takes the fat pin. And that... Oh, man, is that, is that a focus? That's what it is. The thin plug takes the fat pin, and that's the female. And on the side of it, he's told me... It'll have it there, look, there's a positive. So that's the positive side. Sorry for the zooms. The fat plug takes the thin pin. And on the side of that... There's a little negative block. Sorry about the focus. There's lines everywhere on this, yeah? So the fat plug takes the thin pin and it's got the negative. That information was straight up DH. That's fucking, I love a little ditty like that. Dead easy way to remember it. Fat plug, thin pin, thin plug, fat pin. Pause on the plug. What more do you need to know? That's literally it. In those four words, fat plug, thin pin. Not four words, but four main words. That's done, mate. Cheers, mate. That's spot on that. And I, I, I'll never forget that now. Go and follow him because I've also just picked up quite a lot of stuff by just watching his Instagram. I bet he's probably done that on his Instagram before, but I haven't seen it because I didn't follow him at that point. But yeah, fucking mint that. Next one was Mark Allison's tip, which I'll go through now. MC4s on the inverter. Apparently, you always use the ones that supply with the inverter, not some you bought, but the panels aren't as fussy about that. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to connect these legs here that are dangling down to my isolator and leave it off. And then Mark told me to plug it into the first panel and see if I've got 50 volts there. Then put my next panel in and see if I've got 100 volts there. Then plug my next panel in and see if I've got 30 volts there. Which is fucking mint because I'm having a really hard time putting my panels up because it's vertical. And once I've done it, I can't really access my cabling. So to actually check it as I'm doing it is a fucking genius stroke. And then what I'm going to do is on this centre panel here, there's going to be a gap here above this flue. So on this centre panel, that's where I'm going to take my loop. I'll break it in afterwards, I'll not do it today. But I'll be able to put a plug in here to fit a loop up there to put my other panels up. So yeah, cheers for that, Mark. He's given me a load more. I think, he, I think that's all the information he gave me. But yeah, that was absolutely fucking bang on that. I feel 10,000 times more confident in doing this now. Just because they've sent me like four minutes worth of voice messages and videos. Fucking bang on. Always ask kids, because if you don't ask... You'll totally fuck something, then you look like a massive dickhead. If someone you talk to doesn't like you asking questions, they're the dickhead. If you don't ask questions, you're the dickhead. Uh, if people won't answer them, they're either busy or they're a dickhead. But it can be both. But yeah, right then, let's fucking crack these up. Weather's shit as well. Oh, and I'm going to earth this. Apparently, I'm going to earth this because it's touchable from the ground. So I'm going to earth it and I'm going to put some DCSPDs in, uh, which I haven't got on this job, but... That's a side story. As if by magic, this panel that I put up first has the positive on the side of one of it. Brilliant. This is where I'm at now, in case you're following. There's a big loop of cable there. There's a big bit of cable there, which means I can plug that positive into there and that negative will reach. So I can test it one at a time, like Mark says. I'm going to make the MC4s off on here. I'm going to put it to the isolator so I can start plonking these up and testing them. And I've been told that it doesn't matter about the length as long as you ain't got fucking miles on it. So I can leave all that slack cord up behind there and all that slack cord up behind there. And it doesn't matter. I was all concerned about fucking keeping the cable as short as possible and all sorts of mad shit to do with DC that I've sort of learned off other DC things that aren't solar. So I'm sort of operating on a load of DC knowledge that's not related to this, this topic, which is why I'm really fucking being quite careful. And I'm not saying on here, do what I do. Uh, but I'm trying to give out some of the information that I'm getting off other people because I don't want anyone else to struggle with it. But yeah, I'm happy. It's I should be able to get these five up today without blowing the inverter up. That'd be a bonus. 
Uh, it is fucking raining now. It's raining now, really overcast. Uh, not that I'm moaning because if it wasn't raining, obviously we're not putting the solar up. This is in the sun from half past seven to half past four, and I'd be sweating my tits off getting sunburned. So I'm just taking the weather for what it is, which is fucking great because I can hopefully get these banged up. It'll stop raining in a minute. It'll be overcast, and tomorrow when it's gleaming, I get loads of free electricity to power your mum's dildo. A little ditty about why I'm careful with DC, why I'm quite scared of it, is because I understand I've done some big DC stuff, I've done some 2000 amp DC stuff, and what I understand is that that's fucking scary for a start, because AC goes up and down, so every 50 times a second it goes through zero, which means when you break an arc, at some point during that arc it'll be zero, and that's when the arc dissipates a little bit. With DC... It's either fucking full whack or nothing. It's either on or it's off. So if you draw an arc, you'll keep drawing that fucking arc till you pull it far enough away. It burns out or kills you. So yeah, just remember on that side wave on AC, through zero, through zero, through zero. So you get 50 chances a second effectively to let go. Whereas with DC, it'll fucking keep you hanging on to it till you're crispy as fuck. One little stinker is I bought a Krauss nailer isolator. In fact, I've got two Krauss nailer isolators. Now, while these aren't the most aesthetically pleasing isolator, the internal gubbins are excellent. But what I realised is, if I dob these into it to do my testing, or if I want to test this out, um, they're really, really hard to bypass. So you have to take that out to bypass them. So yeah, be aware of that. They're very well interlocked, uh, which has got me a bit of stinking out, never mind. Right, first panel's wired up. There's my pos, there's my neg. One panel, strapped with a ratchet strap. Should be giving out 50 volts in the isolator, if that's working. One thing I forgot to get, which I was told to get by Mark and uh, Dan, was a solar declipping tool which I haven't got so I'm going to be finding around with a screwdriver for them but let's go and see we've got 50 volts oh my god it's actually fucking working I've got 47 volts there well start fitting the panels up now then which I've not done yet right then I'm going to find a way of declipping that plug which I think is a terminal screwdriver's job I'm going to get another panel and another strap and I'm going to get some hardware and see if we can start banging these fuckers up see what goes off might be a bit of a break in the uh, story here the New York Times side Staying alive was no job At second Need you are bitches I am the new king of solar Unless you want it up there Which you don't I'm going to turn it on now I'm going to take you guys along for the ride Because it's our job We've been here together And if it blows up You'll get to watch me fucking cry It's not, like, it's not bad for like 10 hours total work is it But about 5,000 million hours prep time Hold on to your hats kids Well, that one as well as could be expected, didn't it? I've got fire. I've locked. It says waiting on there. According to the manual, it'll wait till it gets to 80 volts on the string to start up and 100 volts to run. Obviously, there's no sun at the minute, so it's not making a it's making absolutely nothing. Uh, and oh no, this some of this checking. Oh, it's, ch oh, it's clicking. Oh fucking hell, something's going off. I'm gonna move back. It's doing stuff. Checking 42 seconds, 41. It could blow up in 40 seconds. I'll come back to you if I'm not done in 40 seconds. Stay with me here because some mad shit's happening right now, yeah? Mad shit. See, these five panels you watch me putting up all day with space for another two at the top. Five panels. Let me show you the view I've got. Let me show you the sunshine on these panels right now. These five panels where I can put two more. Put on the wall, look, and that's where the sun will start hitting the panels. And it'll go across there, yeah? And at half past two, because it's gone half past two, the sun will disappear above that chimney pot, yeah? And at the minute, I'm just getting reflected sunlight. I'm shooting off the clouds and all that, yeah? It's hitting these five panels. Let me go to my inverter. This inverter that cost me 350 quid and the panels that cost me 105 pounds each is kicking out 250 watts in just daylight with no sun. This battery is doing half its job. So literally, that's almost like, that's not far off my base load. It's people in the house but that's that is my base load so effectively now this is going to do fucking not a lot except store energy but it's insane it's kicking out 250 watts on my fag packet mass each one of these 415 watt panels in this light is kicking out 50 watts so if i put another two up there it's going to give me another 100 watts that's 350 watts if it's like a normal overcast day like it is today then it's just going to power my ass all the fucking time what the fuck i'm, I'm absolutely standard i really am um it's better than the maths. Better than the maths was done. I just can't believe it's fucking working now. And maybe I'm a drug addict. Maybe I need to just realise these solar panels are still the work. But yeah, look, where the fuck's the sun? It's fucking insane. Absolutely insane. Anyway, there's the inverter chugging away. Battery's not doing much. I'm going to a mate's party now. 
uh, to eat his pizza. I'm not going to smash all this, I've got to drive. Boo. Laters. This is the end of Solar Day 3.